above the line, below the line. Above the line, below the line. Where do you live? What is your status? What are your rights? Let's start with the foundation. First, there is your Creator, God, if you will, from whom you were given life. You are a creation of your Creator, who endowed you with rights. In the Declaration of Independence, the Founding Fathers stated it best, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. You, collectively with all other Americans known as we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. So in order to put forth a mechanism to establish those ideals of justice, domestic tranquility, common defense, general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty, a republic form of government was created with the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. The Founding Fathers had it fresh in their minds how kings and governments become tyrannical masters, enslaving the people they were ordained or created to serve. Knowing that their rights come from their Creator, the Founding Fathers amended the Constitution with the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights does not create a single right that wasn't already endowed upon the people by their Creator. To the contrary, the Bill of Rights merely ensures, protects, and guarantees that the rights endowed on the people by their Creator must, at all times, remain inviolate. Inviolate? Inviolate from whom? From the people's servants known as public servants. Yes, those individuals working in public in institutions called government. These institutions are referred to as public servants and are generally well compensated for their public service. Remember, public servants are people hired by we the people to work for we the people in the public through functions of government. So how did the Founding Fathers set the wheels in motion to ensure that those employed by the people to function collectively as government would hold the people's rights inviolate? In Article 6 of the Constitution, they made the Constitution the supreme law of the land and required that the senators and representatives and the members of the several state legislatures and all executive and all judicial officers both of the United States and of the several states shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution. Being bound by oath or affirmation is what is known as an oath of office. The oath of office holds all public servants accountable should they ever violate, infringe, or deprive you of one of your God-given, constitutionally protected and guaranteed rights. I repeat, the oath of office holds all public servants accountable should they ever violate, infringe, or deprive you of one of your God-given, constitutionally protected and guaranteed rights. State constitutions further require all elected officials to swear or affirm 
and subscribe and oath of office to be kept on file in the public in a place required by law. At the county level, many are kept at the county auditor's office. At the state level, they are usually kept at the Secretary of State's office. Check your own state's constitution for those requirements. If any individual operating in government collecting a paycheck from the public treasury is not required to have an oath of office, then their first immediate supervisor that is required to have an oath of office is the responsible party should the subordinate employee violate one of the people's rights. This is important. Any servant elected to a county or state position that does not require their deputies and subordinates to subscribe their own oath of office assumes the liability for their deputies and subordinate employees' actions in the performance of their official duties. Let me repeat that. Any servant elected to a county or state position that does not require their deputies and subordinates to subscribe their own oath of office assumes the liability for their deputies and subordinates' actions in the performance of their official duties. The Founding Fathers designed the Constitution to number one, be the supreme law of the land, and two, require the oath of office of public servants. The oath of office effectively bars all public servants of their ability to usurp authority not specifically delegated to him or her. There is no valid claim of immunity after a violation of the people's rights for any claim of immunity is fraud because if valid, it would prevent removal from office for crimes against the people, which removal is authorized or even mandated under U.S. Constitution Article 2, Section 4, as well as 18 U.S.C. 241, 42 U.S.C. 1983, 1985, 1986, and the state constitutions. Precedents of law established by court cases which are in violation of law render violations of law legally unassailable. Such a situation violates several specific stated intents and purposes of the Constitution set forth in the preamble to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, and secure the blessings of liberty. This applies to judges or anyone in any branch of government. What are the penalties against a public servant who violates his oath of office? Felony perjury, insurrection, sedition, and treason against the people. Yes, it is that serious. What happens when an individual is serving in office without having an oath of office timely subscribed and filed? That individual is breaking the law by impersonating a public official. Why do you still feel violated or abused on occasion by some public servant from some government agency? If you say the Constitution is dead and we have no rights, what you are really saying is you have forgotten from whom your rights originated from. Your rights did not originate with the Constitution. You were born with rights endowed upon you by your Creator. If you think the Constitution gave you rights, you are simply mistaken. And while we are here, let me inform you that you do not have constitutional rights. That phrase should never be uttered from your mouth. You have God-given rights, God-granted rights, Creator-endowed rights, and the Founding Fathers wrote the Constitution so that all those rights that exist outside the Constitution are protected and guaranteed by the Constitution. If the Constitution disappeared today, would you have any less rights tomorrow than you have today? The answer is no. Once you begin to understand your rights, you'll have a whole new respect for your status as a private individual living above the line. 
Understanding your rights. What exactly does that mean? It means that your rights end where another's rights begin. Honoring another individual's rights is paramount. You were designed to be moral. The Constitution was designed for a moral people. The Golden Rule states, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What exactly does that mean? If you don't want to be stolen from, then don't steal from others. If you want peace in your life, then don't disturb another man's peace. Knowing your rights and knowing the rights of other men and women around you will help you grasp this concept. You have the basic rights to breathe air to sustain your right to life. You have the basic right to walk or travel either by foot or the preferred means of travel of the age in which you live. That is your right. The United States Supreme Court has stated, quote, the state cannot diminish rights of the people, end quote. Hurtado v. California, 110 U.S. 516. And, quote, where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them, end quote. Miranda v. Arizona, 384 U.S. 436, at page 491. Indeed, the very purpose for creating the state under the limitations of the Constitution was to protect the rights of the people from intrusion, particularly by the forces of government. Below the Line Who is Below the Line? Titles of fictions that function in the public to serve the private. Politicians, military, judges, lawyers, public school teachers, law enforcement, all state workers, all county workers, all municipal workers, all federal workers. For example, the TSA, Secret Service, IRS agents, all government employees, etc. Above the line is private. Below the line is public. The attributes of above the line is private. Rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Moral. Real and of substance. Judicial justice. Article 3. Unlimited right to contract. Crime when one of the people with criminal intent damages one of the people and or their property. Sovereign. Above those that rule. The attributes of below the line is public. Everything is privilege. In other words, dollars. Amoral, fictions, titles of nobility, etc. Administrative justice, contracts that are limited and lopsided. Statute and code determine crimes that are ever changing. Remember, you are a creation of your creator. Start living like it. Live above the line. Know your rights. Stand up for your rights. Remember, government cannot diminish what your Creator gave you. You have the right of self-defense. That right alone defends, protects, and preserves all your other rights. You don't ever have to allow anyone to limit your right and ability to defend your family your property or your life with the most effective tools of the day. Only you can give permission for your public servants to abuse you. Aren't you their masters? Aren't you the ones with rights? Aren't your public servants bound by their oath of office to defend your rights? Absolutely. The choice is yours. You can choose to continue living below the line where public servants are your masters, 
and you are ordered to comply with their every rule, code, or regulation. Below the line is where you are held accountable by your public servants to their every rule, code, or regulation they choose to impose upon you. Or, you can start living above the line and hold your public servants accountable to their oath of office to protect your rights or face the consequences for violating your rights. Know your rights and start living above the line and you'll quickly learn how to hold your public servants accountable to you rather than the other way around.